A most important occasion during the term of office of Alderman Mrs. Dorothy Lewis as Lord Mayor of this city was the unveiling of the Welsh National Memorial Statue of Lord George. And it was to this great man that Wales paid tribute on Friday the 8th of July, 1960. It was here that the Prime Minister, Mr. Harold Macmillan, was accompanied by the Lord Mayor to Gorset Gardens, where the unveiling ceremony was to take place. Speaking from a platform in front of the National Museum of Wales, Mr. Macmillan paid tribute to the first Welsh Prime Minister. He said, David Lloyd George's work has become part of the heritage of our people, and we can, in simple unity, join together today to salute a great statesman and Prime Minister. Mr. Macmillan continued to say that David Lloyd George was also a man of rare genius who brought to our political life and to the affairs of this great nation of ours all the imaginative and intuitive qualities of his race which he combined with courage and audacity. It was at this stage that the Prime Minister left the platform accompanied by the Honourable Anthony Berry to perform the unveiling ceremony of the statue to this famous Welsh statesman. Lady Megan Lloyd George, MP, daughter of David Lloyd George, said it was a memorable and moving day for her family and thanked the instigators of the National Memorial. She also expressed her warm thanks to the Prime Minister for unveiling the statue and for the most impressive and moving tribute he paid to her father. The Lord Mayor of Cardiff said, A peaceful statue in the history of Wales will be remembered with great feeling, as it is with extreme pleasure and a certain amount and a certain amount of emotion that I find myself, that I find in, this myself in this position to pay my, pay my humble tribute and to thank the Prime, Prime Minister for honouring us today. After paying tribute to this great Welsh statesman, the Lord Mayor and other dignitaries left the platform for the City Hall. Friday, the 5th of August, 1960, provided two days of pageantry unequalled in Cardiff's history when Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth arrived at Cardiff General Station to begin her visit to the Welsh capital. Amongst the first civic dignitaries to arrive at the station was the Lord Mayor of Cardiff, Alderman Mrs. Dorothy Lewis, accompanied by her Lady Mayoress. Just before 10 o'clock, there was a burst of cheer as His Royal Highness the Duke of Edinburgh, who sailed overnight from Cowes and the Royal Yacht Britannia, arrived to greet Her Majesty. Formalities on the platform over, the Queen and the Duke, together with the distinguished visitors, left the gaily bedecked station in the gleaming maroon Rolls Royce, which was eventually to take them to the City Hall. On this memorable occasion, all roads seemed to lead to the City Hall, where citizens had taken up positions early in the morning. Under almost any conditions, the civic buildings are impressive, but with a brilliant red of the uniforms contrasted with the black bearskins as the band marched on to take up their positions in readiness for the arrival of Her Majesty. It was at this stage that the city aldermen and councillors took up positions in readiness for the
It was most important in the history of the Welsh Regiment. Here, in the idyllic settings of the castle, the Queen presented new colours to the Welsh Regiment. As the Queen arrived in bright sunshine, the old colours carried by the Majors were marched off parade in slow time to the music of the massed band. After receiving the Colonel of the Welch Regiment, Lieutenant General Sir Charles Coleman and other officers, Her Majesty proceeded to inspect the parade. It was a deserved tribute to the drill of the battalions when Her Majesty said, I congratulate you all on your very smart turnout this morning and on your drill, and I have no doubt that the Principality is as proud of you as I am. I am glad to know too that you are on such friendly terms with this capital city and with the boroughs and towns where you live and serve. At the end of the third day of the royal visit, thousands of excited citizens waited at Cardiff docks to pay their last farewells to the royal party. And to the strains of the Welsh national anthem, the Royal Yacht Britannia slipped away from the dockside as the royal party lined the rails to wave farewell to Wales.